Hello, my name is Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX, and uh, you uh, watchers and listeners probably know me anyway. But we're at the big event, the ID TechX show, and we're interviewing people. And uh, I'm coming here, although this is a 3D printing company, a very unusual one. Uh, with some in other interests that are also very important. We're seeing at this show enormous interest now in what is moving from components in a box, 1900 technology, to structural electronics. So even your smart watch is components in, the bo in a box. Time to move on, that is so yesterday. And the ability to make electronic and electric and optical and magnetic and other things all combined in smart materials moves from very small things but where there's not a lot going on at the moment to something a bit bigger than a mobile phone the interior trim of a car and overhead controls and all that where we have many people here uh, who are um, involved in like Tactotech in fit from Finland and the company from uh, Taiwan in doing in mold electronics and that has its place but it doesn't have the resolution to do what we're going to talk about here so let's go down in size a little bit and we're going to interview Andrea Bubendorfer who is from the company Callahan Inno Innovation and uh, I want you to please tell us about it. <laughs> Hi Peter, I'm working on the Micromaker 3D project at Callahan Innovation. As you were saying before with 3D printing, it's totally changed the way that we make things, but we were interested on the microfabrication level. There's no way of rapid prototyping the very tiny sort of structures that we're interested in. So these are some test examples that, that we've been making. Uh, typically these involve some really expensive, long, time-consuming processes that need to be suited up in a clean room, which takes millions of dollars worth of infrastructure and equipment to make these things. There's no rapid prototyping with microfabrication. So we've developed an entirely new type of 3D printing to um, manufacture these types of devices, right down to 5 microns voxel resolution, and that's an X, Y, and Z. So this type of printing we've called laminated resin printing, and it is based on some microfabrication principles, allowing us to get that type of resolution. And if I can show you on a demonstration box. This is a one-third scale model that we had printed of the prototype that we have developed. We take a photoresist quality dry film like this. It is a five micron high quality film able to withstand um, continuous operating temperatures from minus 60 to plus 200 degrees Celsius, resistant to all known acid solvents and bases. And this is supplied on high um, volume rolls. So we put this on a roll through the machine, rolled across with one support material removed, transported the ribbon symbolizing the, the um, film material that we use. Each layer of the 3D print is shown with the projector that's here, a special UV projector that activates a particular area in that film. Once that area has been activated, which takes about three seconds, there's some laminated rollers that move across and laminate that stack down onto the print bed here. And we repeatedly expose and laminate, expose and laminate, expose and laminate until we've built up the basis of the 3D structure. Then we take the block out of the 3D printer. All of the areas to be polymerized have been exposed and liberated a catalyst from the projector. And we then put it on a um, a hot plate and the heat cure from that then fully polymerizes the structure together in the support material. So essentially it's a laminated type of printing but with no adhesives. So we have a fully polymerized single unit structure with the 5 micron resolution and the support material is highly soluble and is simply washed away. But this support material also allows us to print overhangs and membranes and other type of structures that can move and flex. So it's also ideally placed for printing micro sensor type of devices such as that you'd have in your mobile phone for being able to tell what its orientation is, for example. So what are we talking about, conductors or 
insulators or what? The material itself is naturally highly insulating, but you can see we also have had a little bit of interest in de depositing metal layers onto it. So we can preload metal coated films onto the film as we put it, which means we have a choice where and when to put metal through the devices that we're printing. We're also very interested in looking at nano functionalization of the films that we use. So essentially if we can prototype depositing conductive semiconductive and insulating materials then essentially we can rapid prototype an enormous range of tiny very high value structures. We so, put them down with this process, it's all um, the same process. We, we bring in the metal in advance of the process so this film that we put in would have a pre-coated layer of metal on it or another alternative is to have a metal loaded film with nanoparticles inside that. So there's several options about how we can metalize and how we can functionalize these components that we produce. So how do you do the patterning of the metal? So the patterning of the metal depends on which layer that we're going to put it in and how the metal is loaded. In this case um, I only had metal on a single layer so the metal was being able to put down in advance and because because the metal is nanoparticles and the pattern is on the microstructure um, I've patterned from the reverse side so that the pattern that um, is going to stick to the metal particles stays while everything else is washed away but because the metal nanoparticles are so much smaller than the micro level patterning we just get left with no loss of resolution around the edges for it so simple test case so, so, so slow the, the actual patterning is done by etching in, so in this case yes I've etched off the metal or it washed it off but there are, this is just one way of at least three that we've started trying to do this we're also very interested in the idea that we with the metal loading sinter the um, microstructures afterwards remove the organic material as a binder which means we can make some extremely small metal parts but at the moment it's insulator that you're depositing and you can pattern that's right at the moment we're building up material in, in, in epoxy which is a highly insulating material that's right we're in New Zealand how many of you there's actually really, uh, there's two of us as technical people in the team and our senior business development manager, Kath, has just come back. And the university is helping? Uh, we're actually at a government agency, Callaghan Innovation is New Zealand's innovation agency. Where, which city? Uh, we're based near Wellington, the capital city of New Zealand. And we've just unveiled this technology for the very first time at this meeting. So yesterday was Wonderful. our first public display. Well, we get a lot of first announcements. This is a particularly exciting one. I think that uh, we see that um, in, in the world of um, um, structural electronics, building up structures now with, with, with sometimes in this case very small amounts of material and multi-layer and all sorts of capabilities, it is actually possible with just with metal patterning to do amazing things because you know the metal things that are just sub wavelengths they're not nano dimension they may use nano materials but things that are um, less than a wavelength for whatever you're dealing with light microwaves or whatever there are for instance two routes with meta materials and there's also the route of um, going to nantenas where you rectify light it's all in the labs it's all university of course USA mainly but uh, it's fascinating that just by metal patterning you could potentially make photovoltaics that's uh, much more efficient than PN junctions ever could be uh, and that you could do um, bending of light, making things invisible, that's the party trick of course with mat metal materials but very advanced um, terahertz components and so on. So from our point of view, from what our analysts say about this sort of product, it has an enormous range of possible applications. It's, it can be used far way beyond the obvious miniaturization of conductors and uh, interconnects and antennas and uh, electrodes. There's much more to it and I think that's very exciting. Uh, but what's the twinkle in your eye? When you're working on this, you're thinking, well, you know, I'm going to be asked, where will my company earn its money mainly? What is the application? So I'm going to ask that. What's the answer? It's <laughs> a great question. I'm very excited about this technology in particular because it's a low-cost and affordable way of 
bringing rapid prototyping to microfabrication. Essentially, what we want to do is disrupt the microfabrication industry in the same way that 3D printing has disrupted manufacturing to allow us to rapid prototype the really miniaturized scale. I see there's endless opportunities with microstructures, miniaturized structures, because there's so many drivers of having smaller devices that use less power, take less resources to mine, just even being able to fit something like your phone in your pocket that has so many sensors and that direct, that detect what direction they're in, all of this capability. The thing that would get me most of excited at all would be for people to be able to rapid prototype structures that I've never even heard of, and that's the beauty of 3D printing. I think that's brilliant. That's right. Like the Nobel Prize winner Feinstein said, there's plenty of room at the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. So that's fascinating. Thank you very much. Are there any other applications in your mind, uh, apart from prototyping? Is there products that could be made and sold? We have a number of different um, machines that we're considering building. Although we've developed this primarily as a 3D printer, we're also well aware that it's similar to um, be able to be used as electronic print masks. For example, that pattern that we put down on a layer could be something that could define an electrical pattern. So being able to combine a 3D printed structure with an elect electronically printed structure means that I think there's going to be some amazing opportunities with built-in micro microstructures and electronics because you need that combination of active of moving structures that are essential for sensors as well as the electronics together. Yes, I think that's very interesting because it resonates a little bit with um, people like Taxitech in Finland doing the larger scale things where you probably have a common challenge and that is there is no good simulation software or uh, design software for 3D devices. Uh, it's crazy, but it's true. And so Tactotech said at a recent meeting in North Finland that uh, they're going to move to be a software business to actually reflect that. So they will do the uh, work out the design rules and the physics and the chemistry and what's possible in their world, which is complementary to yours, much bigger, and um, themselves uh, try to be a software business like ARM. Uh, whether they can be sold for $28 billion in due course, I don't know, but you've got to be ambitious in all this. So I think you, you will find that uh, you'll, you might have to develop software, perhaps, if you get into that area, or your licensees will have to, won't they? lot of directions that we can take it in with yeah. that, but um, one of the aspects of it that you mentioned of, of requiring the simulation is something that we've been particularly interested in ourselves because this material that we've that we're using for rapid proto prototyping is actually the production material as well, which means you don't have to look at changes in material characteristics from your prototype to your production material. So you, what you design is what you can actually use. No, it's brilliant. And particularly in the medical area, we want things as small as possible. We really do want them to vanish, don't we? And they've got to be biocompatible. But you can use a great variety of materials, presumably. A great variety of materials um, that as long as it is photopolymerizable and yes. in a dry form we can use it with this technology and we've got our patent has been written in quite a range of different ways to encompass a range of different structures yes. however the material we're already using is recognized widely as being enormously biocompatible and is already being used in a number of um, biomedical applications exciting well we wish you well thank you very much we look forward to hearing from you every year we'll keep up with what you're doing and uh, we're very privileged to have you here and it's uh, if i'd like to say one thing i have one frustration with this company i've come to this stand time and time again and she has people queuing up to talk to her and i couldn't do my interview <laughs> so that's a lovely problem to have anyway bless you wonderful thank you very much um, fantastic to be here and as you say we've been very busy but i'm also very very grateful to publicly have the opportunity to thank IDTechX for this launch pad as the first unveiling of this technology. It's been a fantastic forum for us to do this and much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you.